Okay, so a few people asked me to uh, do a little video tour or walkthrough of uh, Bromhampshire. Um, I've never done a video like this, so apologies if it turns into like some absolute hot mess. Um, but yeah, we're going to give it a go. So yeah, Bromhampshire consists of these sort of islands and then this sort of river bank down here. We're going to start off down at Piastovia, just so you can kind of get your bearings. Um, let's just turn the hood off as well. So, yeah, we're down here at Piastovia, and then we're going to go up here into Rumhampshire. So, I spent a long time on this. More time than I'd care to admit, but uh, it's got something to show for it, so kind of worth it, I guess. Mm. So the road that's coming up ahead now, that's a little custom road that I've put in just to make it a basic like bang straight line all the way to Rum Hampshire to Piastovia. And then I've done one for Astoria as well. So it's pretty much as crow flies as you can get. But we're gonna go through a different sort of entrance to the city, which is just over here. So it's a cliff edge, you kind of get a nice little overview the place so yeah you've got the river bank down here and then the main island off in the distance let's go down into the town and we'll try and kind of get through this as quickly as possible so it's not unbelievably boring for everyone we'll get off the horse here so we've got on this river bank six full-size fields i've put flax in for the purpose of this video because it looks the nicest and it's actually quite useful to have just mountains of flax around so in this little farming area um I've called, what have i called it cricket cricket farm or something like that um we've got these little neighborhoods um so little pockets of houses um i've decorated all the gardens um and all the interiors of the house all the interiors of the house are the same apart from my house basically so yeah just fully decorated basically as much as I could be bothered to and then gardens as well they're all done um, try to keep them as unique as possible while still having like a load of wood wash basin clothesline privy so every garden's got all of that and then some gardens have got um, fruit trees hot plants or a poppy border just depends on what I can fit in there some haven't got any at all but I've tried to mix it up so not everything's just sort of like a copy paste but job basically so uh, this is kind of like the main entrance into cricket farm whatever I've called it plank gate on the front here kind of clips through the building but yeah it is what it is then we've got the mine um, so I've tried to drop as many resources that are like relevant to the area, so there's a stone, iron ore, pickaxes, shovels, some planks, barrels, that kind of stuff. And then also sort of like more personal items like bowls, money pouches, just to kind of make it feel like it's actually like someone is actually working there. Whether it looks like that, I don't know. Well, I, I think it does. And then as we go to sort of like the more farming area, we've got more like farming resources. Don't love that little shed thing that I've done there, but I clearly see I got bored trying to get them all to stand up. Um, this little shed that I come up with, I say I come up with, maybe someone's done it before. I haven't seen it before, so that's why I'm saying I come up with it. Um, this is just privies back to back or front to front. And then a plank fence across the front of it to cover the gaps. It's quite effective. It's really fussy, so it has to be on like completely level ground, otherwise the fence doesn't fit under the roof there. It just it won't it'll just go red. So you have to kind of like play around with it. But yeah, I think the end result's quite good. So we've got some houses down here. So pretty much everyone that lives in these houses are either a miner or farmer or barn worker basically. And again, try to keep each garden different, so just adds a bit of variety, makes it look a bit more genuine rather than just copy and paste. 
only thing I have done is every single house has got the same layout, so they're all 100% sewn, all limestoned, all got this decorative door and the same panels, just because I was building so many houses, like it was just easy, so much quicker just to do the same thing every single time. I think it looks the best version of it as well. I don't think it looks too samey because the gardens are a bit more unique, so yeah. And these sort of like stone wall paths are very sort of English, even Welsh countryside. Um, obviously, I don't know elsewhere, but that's kind of like the inspiration I got for that. And then I haven't just done like a straight road. I've tried to keep the level of the land, so where the land's a little bit flatter, that's where I've kind of mapped the road. Again, just makes it look a little bit more natural rather than just like a straight line grid system. Um, so yeah, I think it looks a little bit better. A little resource storage, which I needed, so banged it there. We've got two sort of like mini neighborhoods here. There's one here and there's one over there. All of these houses are empty in terms of there's no one living in them. They're all decorated. Um, that's because the first time I played this, I hit the build limit and I had all of the villagers. And then once all the kids grew up, there wasn't anywhere for them to live and I couldn't build any more houses. So this time, I've hit the build limit, but I haven't hit the villager limit in terms of like, I've left houses empty basically. So yeah, they can move into them once they hit 18. There's not enough, but it's a good chunk of people. I'll just have to banish the others from the realm. Draw names from a hat or something. It's kind of like the main entrance. I haven't gone too super fancy because it's mainly the entrance to the farm yard area. So yeah, kept it relatively simple. And again, these houses are all empty or vacant, but they are decorated inside. And there's just a few bearings. This is like the swamp land. Little picnic tail there, probably the worst place you could probably put picnic tail because probably mosquitoes everywhere, but it looks quite good. Um, and then this sort of like arbor trellis with the bench inside. Took that from Pierre Stovia, the Castland's house. He's got it in his garden. So a lot of these ideas are lifted from what developers done, some of from what people have done. On like Reddit and stuff like that, and some of them the stuff that I've come up with myself. So yeah, quite like this area. It was quite effective for what I was going for, which is basically like an English countryside kind of thing. Then we have the main bridge going into Rum Hampshire Island, which is kind of like the main island. Let's little look back onto that area. Yeah, put all these gates and those people gardens. They've got a little beachfront. You might just be able to see a little bench over there. Nice little touch, if I do say so myself. So yeah, main city entrance. <coughs> Excuse me. Put this excavation shed, which is supposed to look like a sort of like a, a guard house. Because I thought the people working there would stand in there, but they didn't. I thought it looked like they were guarding. Look, sort of guard duty but I've never seen anyone in there so that kind of fell flat but it still looks quite effective I guess. Then we've got little horse hitching posts here so I dropped a little saddle on a chest there's some hay in a compost bin make it look like a trough and some water as well and then this was a bit of a favourite with people geese aren't coming out why aren't they coming out um, but yeah there's goose hut basically uh, looks quite good when they come out. Oh, are they coming? Yeah, forget it. Tinkered with this a lot, um, but quite happy with this how this has turned out. So these are privies again. Just privies everywhere. And there's wrapped stone wall around it just to make it look a bit more sort of like fortified. And then we're entering the sort of inner town on, on the island. So you've got like town centre and things like that. Little tree roundabout thing. Um, and these are just drop planks. Again, these are sort of that idea from the towns that are already on the map. Um, so a lot of people have done it as well. Looks quite good. 
just kind of gives the road a little bit of depth rather than just a gravel floor. So, yeah, a bit of variety. And then, yeah, resource storage area seemed logical that there would be um, resources down here. So we've got, like, planks, barrels, another shed. Just drop in relevant items again. So, yeah, resource storage here, food storage here, and then there's a little hop orchard behind it as well. Just a little nosy. More for aesthetics than anything else, to be honest. Then we've got Paddy's Tavern. Uh, so we've got just dropped bottles and stuff like that. Looks a bit more effective at, in the evening when people like sat around it. Looks a bit like someone hasn't done their job during the day and not cleared the tables, but yeah. And we've got a few houses in the, this inner part of the town, uh, that being one of them. And then we've got a little town centre area as well. So, you know, just apple trees, and then I've dropped stone into a circle, and then inside that stone circle is just dropped fertiliser, just, again, to kind of give it a little bit more depth, a bit of contrast in the soil um, to what's down there already. I think it looks all right. And then I spent a lot of time on this market, that uh, sort of area. So <coughs> each market saw oh, a hole in the tent. Uh, each so yeah in front of market stalls on the tables just a relevant item so that one's the tools stall has got like bows and arrows and uh, crossbows and stuff that's got resource one's got like iron ingots and stone clothes have got more luxury items which you can buy from uh, the guy in Pierstovia um, a bit overlooked I think in terms of like decoration items but yeah looks quite good I've seen a few people do it. Um, so, yeah. That was really annoying. Potion of possibilities. All the potions I cannot get to stand up on a table, so I had to put them on a plate, which doesn't look as good, but I just got too annoyed at it, so I just settled for the bowl, not the plate. And then we've got, yeah, just pike and stuff inside the baskets, clothing items. Again, more stuff from the luxury guy in Pistovia. And, uh, yeah, the. the City produces like a lot of stuff, so to set you like storage space, that's why I've got so many market stalls. Bit overkill from like this aesthetic point of view, potentially, but I don't care. And then these sort of like junctions, I've just tried to add a little bit something to it, so I just stuck a wall around it and a tree in the middle, just makes it look a bit more sort of interesting. And then if we head into the Artisan Quarter, uh, so this is like a cosy part of town, so I've deliberately made it like really compact, just to make it sort of feel a bit more, I don't know, realistic, I don't know, sort of medieval towns I imagine probably were very sort of like kind of claustrophobic, so yeah, that's what I've kind of gone for, I'd love it if there was like a two-story building that we could put in, because it would give it a bit more of a sort of like daunting kind of look I don't know. and I've just gone wild with the trellises so all this fence down here is covered in trellis just yeah these archways so yeah this area is made up of uh, some houses and then all the production stuff so smithies sewing huts kitchens so sort of like a dining area um, and then a little outside dining area here as well <clears throat> and then quite like this little section of road little poppy border on, on the edge and then we come into the carpenter's quarter so again stone circle with fertiliser in the middle this was like the first attempt at a maze at like really like dropping items in terms of like decoration I was quite happy with how it turned out essentially it's just an absolute metric ton of wood dropped so nothing special but again, like a little money pouch and gloves, axe, cup, just to make it look a bit more personal. And then some sticks and a compost bin. The planks, like, you get, someone asked about how you do them so neatly. Basically, you just go into the inventory and drop a single plank, but don't exit the inventory and just keep dropping single planks, and they should stack up. Don't do too many because they'll fly like everywhere, but if you do like six or seven, like it should turn out all right. 
And again, all these areas are like decorated, everyone's got privy and all that jazz. And this is more of a neighborhood kind of section. So these are all houses down here. Again, little stone wall line paths, orchard, trees, poppy borders, um, washing stuff, those lines. And then we come down into the fishing quarter. So that is a fishing hook that I've put down, and that is a fishing hook I've put down. This is all already on the map, which is why it's damaged and you can't fix it. So, uh, but I think it looks quite effective. Uh, left as it is, and there, yeah, I've just added a couple more fishing huts just to kind of expand it a little bit. So, the path that I put in here and here basically just outlines where I can build. So, anything beyond here, it's like an exclusion zone for this sort of decoration piece on the map. So, I just basically build a path around it so I can see like how far I can go, basically. Actually, let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go this way, sorry. Awful camera work. Let's just sprint back. What random children around? Where are the parents? Um, and then this is the second entrance into the sort of inner town, which leads on to um, Apple Avenue, named because it's just an avenue lined with apple trees, really. Um, but yeah, it's quite good. It's all right. And then Apple Avenue leads on to the Maple Circle, which was sort of the main idea I had for this area. Um, so I wanted to see on the map. Basically, this is like in the top central area. And then I wanted just a road straight down from the middle of the island leading up into that. So that's kind of like the first idea I had for the island. Didn't really flesh out anything else. Um, when I started, other than I wanted like an inner town sort of area, so yeah, this was like the initial idea basically. And uh, yeah, it's just basically a tree with a fence circled around it, and then some small houses wrapped around it. Um, nothing crazy, um, but uh, yeah, a bit of an English country garden kind of vibe going on. That is not being me being lazy. There were flowers in the flower pots, but I think they've just patched a bug where if you put the shutters on, like the flowers would disappear. So yeah, look, for some reason like those have stayed, but some of them haven't for some reason, I don't know. Um, and they kind of got like, the outer circle here, so it's just like a outer circle of houses. And again, each garden has got its own sort of thing as best I can. So some of them have got more orchard trees in it. This one, no, not this one, the one, the next one's got like a vegetable garden in it. Let's sprint over. Oh, no, sorry, the one after this one. There we go, there we go. So that's got a little vegetable garden. So yeah, just trying to keep things unique and not just a copy-paste job. Um, oh, lights on. Let's just speed things up a bit. Uh, yeah, another shed there. Uh, this is sort of like a little neighbourhood area. Um, not much to say about that really. And then we're coming down to the park here. This is one of the first things that I did. Um, I wanted to make a bit of a feature out of this little pond, lake, puddle, whatever. So yeah, just a uh, little fence around it, a little health and safety thing. So kids don't walk into the pond and then yeah just like benches and stuff like around it um, and then this is from Hampshire Cottage which was my initial house on the island before I moved on to another section which I'll show you in a second I'm trying to speed things up because it's getting dark this is the farming quarter uh, so I've got one full-size field here some orchard trees there as well, and then a little vegetable garden down here. And right in the corner is where all the livestock live. So a little farmhouse, farmhouse cottage there, and then, yeah, sheep, chickens, pigs. That's that little section. Let's 
one over here. And you can kind of see the second island from here as well, which is where we're heading now. Let's cut through this orchard. It's sort of like fence lined orchard. That was taken from the Stoya. So again, just taking little ideas from there, from what the de developers have done. Let's head on to uh, Mantis Island, I think I've called it. So, homemade bridge, not the best I've seen. People have done way better than that, but it does the job. So, just logs dropped underneath, planks on top, a little fence that stretches across, which, yeah. Little guardrail. And we've got another hitching post here for this island, a little well. So, yeah, I'm just dropping saddles, saddle bags horseshoes hanging on the hooks, another feeding trough, little water bowl thing. Uh, and then, yeah, we're heading into sort of the main sort of town. So I've got this little house on the left, and then we've got market uh, square as well. So pretty much the same again. Dropped items relevant to the market stall outside. Little archery target, perhaps on your new bow and arrow, whatever you've used. Um, stole this little idea from Peter Ha, shout out. Um, I added a little bowl of soup, on the, a bowl of soup, bowl of soap. Uh, just give it a bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of extra edge, whatever. And then again, I've tried to keep this island like really tight and enclosed, um, just to give it more of a sort of like homey vibe. Um, so yeah, quite like this little area. Cramped, but not too cramped. So then that took forever. I had a lot of apples in there, a lot of plums as well. Uh, then we have the second tavern, little pub garden out here as well. Looks a little bit better. Now people are sat around at it and it's not just empty with random cups everywhere. And then inside as well, Dropped plates and stuff on the bar, set the table. He's been stood up. Um, and then we head into sort of the other livestock area on this island. So the idea basically was that um, each island would be kind of like self sustainable. So I basically. It's Everything that you want is grown on the island. Although I haven't actually put any farmland on this island, but that was kind of the main idea for the main island. So, yeah. Built farmhouse here. And then the main orchard, which is quite expensive. So, literally, I'm not going to go around the whole thing because it's just an orchard. But, yeah, just to kind of get the scale of it. So, yeah, every type of tree is in here and then the hot plants as well. And then that stretches all the way down. And there's this little pass that goes through the middle. But yeah, we're not going to go all down because it's boring. Then sort of around the edge of the pub garden is where we've got like the smithy. So we've again just dropped like relevant smithy items in good stone, buckets of water, that kind of stuff. And then, yeah. So this isn't particularly like special or interesting, but every sort of behind the scenes area I've tried to decorate, even if it's just like barrels and chests. So like wherever you go on the map, in terms of in the city itself, there's something there basically. So it doesn't sort of look unfinished. Just means a hell of a lot of items are being dropped. And then this last stop on the tour, this is my little private island that I made um, with a terrible bridge um, so an unfinished fishing hut and a hell of a lot of planks dropped massive bridge to get to what is an absolutely tiny island but it was the best I could do basically and then yeah my little island so we've got a little eating area dining area down here lovely stuff and uh, yeah just some benches and then I've gone all out with the decorations because it's my house. 
Uh, I haven't done that with every single house, um, but if you're into first person mode, so you can appreciate a little bit more. So yeah, just put loads of items in there, hung stuff up on the hooks, things on the shelves, shoes by the door. And here's my wife. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Just barge me out of the way. And child as well, little Odo. Off he goes to bed. Uh, that's about it, really. Got a little back garden as well. But yeah, that's that's a lot, really. Just head into photo mode. It's, it's really too dark, but kind of get a bit of perspective on the size of it. So the orchard's pretty big. That's the main island. So yeah, hopefully that wasn't unbelievably boring. Um, but yeah, a couple of people asked for it, so we got it. Um, got any questions? Just drop me a message. Uh, if you want to um, walk around it, like my Steam usernames on Reddit, so feel free to add me, and I can open it up as like co-op, and you can have a little walk around. If you want, feel free to steal any ideas. Lord knows I've still stolen ideas from people. Um, so yeah, just go wild with it. Um, yeah, hope you hope you enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, see you later.